Week 15 is over. We never thought it would happen, but it's finally over. And we turn our attention to Thursday night football, week 16, semifinal matchups. Try to get you primed up so that you can win a championship. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. Footland, it's championship time. And that means you're about to be a hashtag Foot Clan champion. And what's the best part of being the big winner? Telling everybody about it all the time. You flex on them. And the best way to do that is at fantasychamps.com. They got trophies, belts, rings, everything you need to let everyone else know how bad that they suck and how <laughs> awesome you are. And right now, you can help out the league and help yourself. Put a trophy in that cart. Put one of their incredible rings in that cart and use the promo code free ring and you're going to get a free ring just like okay, the promo code says. Sense. So you buy a trophy and you can get a free ring at the exact same time. Promo code free ring at fantasychamps.com. We also want to thank Harry's for supporting today's podcast. Look, guys are hard to shop for. So you're grabbing that last minute gift and you want something, you know, exciting and practical. And look, I did this. I've been a Harry's user, Harry's razors. For years and years and years. But I went and I got my dad the Harry's pack with the razor and the and all the different blades. And I literally get a text from him that, <laughs> that says, Yeah, this is the best razor I've ever used. I'm changing from the one I've used for however he's probably a hundred by now, so fifty years maybe. <laughs> and um look, it, we we absolutely endorse and love Harry's. You're talking about high quality, fair prices. Sharp blades that last. This holiday season, listeners can get $5 off, plus free shipping on any Harry's limited edition holiday shave set when you go to harrys.com slash footballers. The sets come with a weighted handle, three razor cartridges, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. Everything he'll need for a smooth shave, all packaged in a handsome holiday gift box. To claim your $5 off plus free shipping, go to harrys.com slash footballers. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, thank you, Lord, that it's not week 15 anymore. Ah, ah. Oh, we made it. We made it, everybody. We've reached the long break between week 15 and 16. They call it Wednesday, December 22nd. Power breaths, everybody. Get back in. Another game tomorrow. <laughs> That's what I mean. Oof. Welcome into the fantasy footballers. Get that carbon dioxide out. Oxygen in. You, bear, you don't have much time. Power up. Mike Wright across from me. I'm Andy Holloway. No Jason Moore today. Told you yesterday. Family is... Um, the fantasy flu man. Oh, Ooh. okay. All right. <laughs> that's, that's, so he called us. He's like, guys, I got the flu. That is his voice. Yeah. He, I got the flu. I can't possibly make it into work today. Oh, we didn't want him to make it in. Right on the cusp of Christmas. I got the flu. Keep it to yourself, Jason. But uh, we're holding it down. And uh, in some ways, he's blessed. He doesn't. He may have a horrible illness, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have to reflect on week fifteen. And look, I I can chime in from time to time on today's show and just give like Jason's thoughts. If, if you probably should. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know that they don't have to do with being in the league of record playoffs. Yeah, that's for sure. What a loser. So, uh, Team Owl versus Team Reaper this week. How you feeling about our matchup there, Al? You said you wanted to play me. I found that insulting. I said I'd rather play you than the other guy. This is like the baseball equivalent of like walking the guy in front of you <laughs> to get to you because you didn't want to play them. And then, you know, that puts a chip on my shoulder. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so we're previewing the 49er Tennessee game, which will have immediate implications for our matchup and many fantasy players out there. And I've got the RB1. Uh, that'd be Debo Samuel. Correct. I was looking uh, after Cooper Cup's performance last night. Mike told me to look up the fantasy points for Cooper Cup compared to the number two wide receiver. Well, the number two wide receiver is Debo Samuel, who is 70 something points behind Cooper Cup. Like the Cooper Cup MVP chants are beginning. Because after, you know, ah, it's Brady. Now, you know, I'd probably put Rodgers at number one right now. 
Yeah, you, the quarterback gets the bump. But if he struggles down the line, or you know, at the end of the season, and then Cooper Cup keeps us going and hits two thousand yards receiving, regardless of the extra game. Cooper Cup's what a gonna, year! Going to win my father his first fantasy championship. Oh, I, I that's, think that's delightful. Yeah, I've always been kind of perplexed by the receivers that you know. Devonte Adams is in this category, but where where you you know you know what the offense is. It's that player. Mm -hmm. N makes no difference. No matter what team you are, these are all, you know, the best coaches in the world. Makes no difference. Cooper Cup catches two touchdowns. It's funny because uh, that did you see? You saw the game, I assume, because we we had the we couldn't even watch the Washington game. Yeah, I was doing my best to stream the uh, the the boy had his own football practice okay. last night, so uh, it was. As much as I possibly could, I watched. Did he give Cooper Cup levels of effort in his practice? He did not. Oh, okay. very disappointing. All right. Well, um, but the second touchdown to Cooper Cup, if Cooper Cup had disappeared at the moment the ball arrived, would have gone right into Odell Beckham Jr.'s hands for a touchdown. <laughs> and maybe oh. that's coming from a man who got one reception from Odell Beckham and flamed me out of the playoffs. Yeah, the the good thing so Tuesday night football dot com <laughs> We still got, we still got plenty of Week 15 action inside of that. There, it was, it was not done with us, but you, you had like Cooper Cup carried your team uh, yet again, and you, Antonio Gibson, he, he injured his toe, and by the looks of things, was not efficient. You but mean the one point seven per carry? That's what I'm talking about. Mm, yes, fifteen but, for twenty six. But, uh, but he got he had a bunch of receptions had had a touchdown so he he definitely helped your team out and Jalen Hurts my goodness nearly 300 passing yards nearly 40 rushing yards that combined three touchdowns if you waited it, like the good things did come to you uh, for that waiting and you were uh, delighted to see Jalen Hurts with a weak winning performance. Yeah, and you know Miles Sanders, eighteen for one thirty one on the ground. Dallas Goddard, seven for one thirty five. When you when you throw for almost three hundred, I think, you know, if you believed in Devontae Smith in this game, you were you were disappointed. Um, just three for forty, and two of those catches were early in the game. Uh, rolling back to the other game, Sony sure. Sony Michelle had seventy three percent of the snaps, and was the clear lead runner. I mean, and just it, looks better. Yeah, yeah eighteen for ninety one. Caught two passes. Daryl Henderson was an afterthought. And then Rashad Penny was the guy, got hurt, came back in. Uh, DJ Dallas with the touchdown that made people break their coffee tables if you played <laughs> Rashad Penny. And then DK Metcalf. I mean, man. It, well, it's the same old story. Man. I, did you see the play where he was wide open for the touchdown? Mm hmm. Russ doesn't do this with Lockett. Like, I don't know if, if he was just too fast on that play, but. He had five, six, seven yards of separation from Jalen Ramsey. Right. The ball's put on the line there. It's another long touchdown. But you can only go so many weeks saying shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yes. And, and espe especially not well, obviously not this week with Lockett on COVID, uh, the COVID reserve, but where Lockett's somehow getting it done, it's it's very bizarre what is happening. And uh if you need more of us, which I'm sure you do, we are on Spotify Green Room later today. Oh, yeah. The party room will be me, Mike, and a bear. <laughs> 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can download the Spotify Green Room app and tune in. Which, if you've never joined us, that music actually does play the entire time. It's for the full hour. <laughs> it's for the full. You will feel um, uncomfortable after a while. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. You want to watch the show, it's the fantasyfootballers.com. If you want to be a part of our fantasy football community of twenty plus thousand strong, wonderful humans that are about to win championships if week fifteen didn't destroy you. Join so, the foot dot com. Yeah, I feel pretty good, you know, like overall. Right. Um I'm greedy with fantasy, so sure. it's like yeah, I, I want to win all my matches and um you know, listener league survived. Yeah, trying, I'm trying to. You're our hope over there. I'm trying to bring home the listener league so that it opens up one more spot. Because if you win it and you're not us, yep, you're back for next year. So I, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm hanging out. And then league of record, I'll play Al next week. And 
I do have a, a quick public service announcement here mm. uh, because I saw a few of them on Twitter, including uh, my Dungeons & Dragons DM. Uh, people lost a fantasy playoff matchup on the Matthew Stafford kneel down. And look, fantasy football platforms, I understand that technically speaking, the quarterback receives negative one rushing yard for that play. But we got to stop that crap, man. To lose in the playoffs because your quarterback was so good that they kneeled out the game. To take that away from people is completely absurd. And that, that, per, that, that play needs to be flagged and marked and removed for negative points if they take a knee. I would argue that that play should technically be adjusted by the NFL. Uh, yeah. Because it, it, it's, it's... Sure, that's a larger... Let, let me bring up two separate instances of the walk example in baseball. That's what our show's about. Eventually, baseball said, hey, we're not going to make you throw four pitches. Right. It's just a walk if you want to walk the guy. Now, the four pitches would have counted on your pitch count before. Right. As yes. a stat. And now they don't. So if you're going to kneel down... You should go tell the referee, this is a kneel down. Yes. And then it counts as an auto kneel down, and it shouldn't be a stat situation. I know a lot of people lost on the Russ pick. Yeah, that, that one. As well. That, that one, look. That's not, just, nothing to fix there, just heartbreak. Yeah, that, that is definitely heartbreaking. But I'm but please, fantasy platforms, it's, we can't fix it this year. I'm sorry. But next year, we got to get this taken care of. I don't think they can of. do it, man. I bet that they can. You got you, What are you going to do, hand flag every one of those? Yeah, just like I mean, if they're inputting, you know, all the plays, the just, league does it though. Yeah, I but I don't care. <laughs> like you're, if this is you're, just, you're irate. It's it didn't happen to me, so I don't have like the full fury. I if if this happened to me this year, uh, this year, I would be just looking like Hades from uh, uh, Hercules, just hair on fire, burning the earth to the ground. But I we have Look, the technology. Just, it's 2021. We have the technology to do this. Score score more points. Oh, stop. That's what that's what that other crowd would say. Yeah. Uh buy or sell time. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Well, Jason was perfect last week, but he's not here, so it doesn't count. Uh um, <laughs> You and I were both two two for three. I sold to Travis Kelsey 70 receiving yards and lost. You were just a little bit off. You bought the seven receptions for Diggs. He ended up with four. So we tied. Yep. Um, by the way, Al, uh, Al and I are playing in, in League of Record, but none other than Judge Giamatti himself. Brooks is here. Yeah. And I can root for you now. All so right. So I'm officially in your corner for the Dynasty League. Love it. Thank you. Yeah. Brooks yeah. deserves that one. Yeah, I mean, this will be... Uh, <clears throat> He's been a contender for years. Yeah, this will be the first non-Andy, non-Jason in a little while. Unfortunate, though. You know who my two running backs are in there? That's Kerry Oh, Meade Leonard Fournette. And Joe Mixon. <gasps> so we'll see how that goes. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. Oh, Brooks. <laughs> oh. Buy or sell. Kyler Murray, three touchdowns against Indianapolis. The Cardinals are at home this week. One total touchdown the last two weeks for Kyler Murray. That is um, Trevor Lawrence stuff. So three total touchdowns against Indianapolis. Cardinals have been horrible at home. They've been horrible in general lately. Three's a, three's a lot. Three, I, three is a lot. For and right now. I mean, if you can go back even a little bit further. You have that Green Bay game where – uh, DeAndre Hopkins had the almost touchdown. I mean, this is a long time ago, but that ended up getting called back on a penalty. And then Hopkins essentially missed uh, the majority of that game because that was the beginning of his hamstring injury. But Kyler did not have a touchdown in that game. I don't know. It's the the offense looked very lost without their number one wide receiver. And I will sell the three touchdowns. I'm going to buy it. I will. Go the other direction. The over under is fifty in this game. Cardinals are still favored. Christmas Day. I'm gonna buy uh <laughs> You're buying the Christmas I'm miracle. Buy the Christmas miracle. All Aaron right. Jones, top twelve running back against Cleveland. He's been the running back nine and ten on twenty three total touches the last two weeks. So this has been It was up last week though. It was fifteen opportunities compared to the eight the week before. 
top 12 against Cleveland this week. Man, they're playing so well. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna buy it. I think they'll sneak inside. Eh, this line is so tough because of the you're never quite sure at this point. Will it be Aaron Jones? Will it be AJ Dillon? Because two weeks ago, Dillon was the getting the majority of the opportunities. Did have a, this Dylan week, had a rushing touchdown this week. Yeah, he did. And this week it switched back in terms of uh, just being on the field, 63% of the snaps for Aaron Jones. Um, I will – yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to just be matchy-match, but I would play him as a top 12 running back, so I'll buy it. Gabriel Davis, is he a top 30 wide receiver against New England? Four touchdowns in the last three weeks. Been top 30 for the last three weeks, including wide receiver three last week with the two-touchdown performance. But New England, this is in New England. They're allowing the third fewest fantasy points to wide receivers on the year. Beasley will be out. Um, top 30 is not an incredible bar to reach. So, uh, And Manny Sanders was – he was classified as week to week uh, last week. Obviously missed, missed this one. Have you guys seen any updates on his availability for this week? Nothing yet. Nothing no, yet. I, I'm going to buy top 30. Regardless? Yeah, I'll buy top 30 for Gabe Davis uh, uncomfortably. <laughs> uh, man, it will be interesting to see if they try to scheme Stephon Diggs out, and that just opens things up for Gabe Davis, who with the big playability could certainly hit it. Top 30? I will. I'm going to sell it. I'm gonna. St that's that's okay. a, that's a really tough one though, with not knowing if Emmanuel Sanders will be there or not. Uh, I don't think he'll be there. Uh, that was buy or sell from pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers get a ten dollar credit. I am curious, Mike, your overall thoughts on Stephon Diggs' season because, uh, not as prolific as last year by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Still, you know, when I looked at up those numbers. Earlier today, I mean, he's at 82 receptions for 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns for, you know, with a few weeks left. Yeah, he's still a top 10 wide receiver. Uh, still has 128 targets on the year. About the same yards per catch. He's already matched last year's touchdown total. The touchdowns pace is a little bit better this year, which has saved a little bit of the lack of volume. But, you know, going into next year, is this a, a top 10 guy? Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's a... A truly elite wide receiver, um, and and Josh Allen is a you know a top tier quarterback in the NFL. So he'll still be a top ten guy, uh, in my opinion. We haven't seen the the, the lack of week winning weeks, week winning weeks. Yeah, uh, no, you got it. That is that's what's really been disappointing. You have a number two overall finish against the New York Jets, but other than that, he's just kind of like a a wide receiver too getting where he is by being at least mostly consistent. And if if the question is, how do you feel about the season? Slightly I think, disappointed? I think you could be slightly disappointed, but holistically looking at how many wide receivers drafted in that range have been incredibly disappointing, you got to look at that and say that was a W. Diggs or Metcalf next year? Stephon Diggs. Okay. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Oh, funny enough, we we have uh, some Emmanuel Sanders news. He will be out at practice today for the okay. walkthrough, and they will take it a day at a time. See, when you said he was week to week, I was thinking to myself, he's been weak as a start for a long, long time. Sure. I mean, kind of irrelevant, flamed out. Um, Burned very bright, but... You know, if, no Cole Beasley, you're going to see almost... What, 80, 90% of snaps for Gabe Davis regardless? It'll be – if Sanders is out there, it'll be interesting to see who goes where on the field. Well, I will say this. I would certainly play Davis over Sanders. Yes. Even with yeah, an active yeah. Sanders. I would agree with that. All right, we got bad news for Brooks. Uh, Leonard Fournette, injured reserve. Oh, it's for Brooks. It's for both producers. Goodness. Both of you rode Leonard Fournette into the playoffs. That's – that yeah. one – Womp womp. That one sucks. <laughs> uh, hopefully – you <laughs> <laughs> that was al hopefully yeah. you looked towards the playoffs and we're getting your team right and you insured yourself with ronald jones but 
Oh, you're not scrambling for the new Buccaneer Le'Veon Bell? The ring. <laughs> They're making a new movie. He's called The Ring Chaser. Like, what? <laughs> Who? Why are we doing this? I tweeted yesterday. Why are we doing this? I have this? to tell oh, this yes, story. Oh, yes. I have to tell this story. Sure. I tweeted yesterday. And I look, I admit, this week, week 15 has found a new level of, like, angry Andy. <laughs> that didn't, it, it didn't exist. I haven't been able to get rid of it. So the vitriol has been a little stronger. So on Twitter, I just when I saw they were signing Lev Bell, like I did what you did. I, I shook my head and said, why in the world is this guy playing? And so I said, you know, you could sign RG3 to play running back and you get better production than Lev Bell, which I'm not sure that's not the case. But it probably, you know, and I, I, I if, mean, if RG, you're running sweeps, listen, absolutely. Listen, I don't know if I can help this. RG3 wants a job, people. <laughs> RG3 wants a job. He's ready. He was quick to reply on the tweet. And um I don't I wouldn't it have been better to have him out there than Garrett Gilbert last night? Uh maybe. He's ready. He's thirsty. Yeah. He, uh, he wants a job. It it is wild. Just the landscape of the NFL where you have these players out there. Like, I guess we haven't heard a peep about Todd Gurley. I don't know if Todd Gurley wants to play like maybe he's cool taking this year off maybe he's cool taking his gigantic bag of money and never playing football again but the fact that we have not heard really his name linked to anybody and Le'Veon Bell just keeps getting jobs and then you have guys like Gilbert where Robert Griffin has been saying a long time that he wants to try and make a comeback and no one will give him the opportunity I there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that we do not know about. Uh, Tyreek Hill's been added to the COVID list. Kelsey's on the list. Sweet mercy. So there you go. Um, are we? Ex are you expecting Kelsey back? I think that there is a chance. There, there was good news today. The Chiefs who have been dealing with an outbreak had no positive tests today. Okay. So there was a thought that that could be continuing – no more positive tests, but with the new protocols, you could have Tyreek back, you could have Kelsey back, or you could not have them. Brooks, are you saying Kansas City's an afternoon game? Yes, sir. <sighs> You'll know before that. Yeah. You'll uh, know before that yeah. with, with, with Ty, uh, at least with Kelsey. That's rough. A.J. Brown is turning towards playing if practice goes well. <laughs> is that the report we have? Yeah, that's that's what I saw as well. Well, shoot. Isn't that kind of... Fits everybody out there <laughs> practicing on the field? Would you play A.J. Brown? So, generally speaking, I don't want to. Um, but I will say... San Francisco, like, Thursday night. Like Because he is just coming back, he's been so disappointing. But I will, I'll highlight like uh, uh, our family league where we play with our kids. We were devastated by uh, just draft injuries and, and all of those things. So, like last week where we were able to squeak through to the next round, but that lineup included K.J. Osborne, uh, Jeff Wilson, A.J. Green, and A.J. Brown's chilling there on our uh, IR. Yeah, you're going to play so, him over like, those So there guys. are teams out there, if you have a double flex 12-teamer, there are certainly places where A.J. Brown would slide in to a starting job. All right, Cole Beasley's on the reserve COVID list. Uh, I believe he's not vaccinated. Uh, Carlos Hyde on so he, injured reserve. Which means he won't be playing. No. That, was, that was the point I was making. 10-day minimum. Yeah. MVS is on the reserve COVID list after all the glowing things you said yesterday. His, his status is up in the air. Shoot. We're on Eckler watch. No updates yet. So do, okay. we, do we not have a practice report, Brooks? Can you look at? We don't. No practice report for Eckler. Okay. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel. want to thank Shopify for supporting today's show. If you don't know who Shopify is, go to shopballers.com. Mm. We use Shopify. That is correct. Um, you know, if you're an upstart business, a startup, established business, it doesn't really matter. You can sell stuff anywhere. Um, you can synchronize your online and in-person sales. You can scale. We run our entire merch shop on Shopify and um, there's a reason for that because it's easy it's easy and it works and it's worked for years and you can accept every payment method and it's 
you know, it's pretty turnkey and it's as customizable as you want. So go to Shopify.com slash footballers, all lowercase, and you'll get a free 14-day trial to the entire suite of features on Shopify. You can grow your business with Shopify today. Go to Shopify.com slash footballers right now, Shopify.com slash footballers. Foot Clan, if you've ever wanted to make your home feel you know, a little bit safer, there's no better time than right now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving our listeners early access to their holiday deals, which that's 40% off their award winning home security. We love Simply Safe. Uh, they've been securing and protecting our office now for years since we, the day we moved in. We reached out, we got Simply Safe because, look, okay, they, they don't have uh, garbage long term contracts, they have quality uh, monitoring. And we set it up like they they sent us the system, and we were able to get things up and running in in no time. They were named the best home security system of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. You can customize the system that you need for your home online in just minutes. You can even get free custom recommendations from Simply Safe. Uh, these are the biggest discounts of the year. Take advantage of Simply Safe's holidays. Uh, Simply Safe's holiday deals. And get 40% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com slash footballers. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers for 40% off your entire system. Dan Arnold, designated to return. The postman? The postman. Justin, it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if he's back on the field. but um, Christmas deliveries are back on. Okay, so I brought up Stefan Diggs, right, with the uh, – Next year's view. What about um, <clears throat> Terry McLaurin? Oh my gosh! Get this man a quarterback. For I mean, two, out two loud. for fifty-one last night with with uh, Gilbert. Yeah, but and one of the catches was a another incredible downfield uh, highlight reception. I, I I mean, you you certainly get to a point where you can't just keep going back to this well of. Of, of saying Terry McLaurin can overcome the quarterback situations because he's being put in such terrible situations with with his quarterback. But it will it will shock me if Washington is not really active in the market. I know that the the story of Taylor Heineke it's it's a feel good story. Maybe he gets another chance next year. But this is a team that they're probably out of the playoffs now. But they were in it going into this week. They were in it at the beginning of this game. They were up, I believe, 10-0. to zero. And had they squeaked out a victory this week, you're talking about them as a potential wild card team. So I do expect them to be very aggressive in who they go after. I don't know if they can lure in uh, a Rodgers, a Wilson, or Watson, a player of that caliber. Uh, but if they do then Terry McLaurin's going to be very exciting. He'll probably end up being overdrafted because we'll rubber band back way too high. But the player is so good, he just needs a quarterback. I don't know who it was that tweeted it, but they brought up the idea of offering, like if you're the Lions, you should offer Rodgers and Devontae all the money in the world right. and say you can run the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, have, you have say over all personnel moves, all the things that Rodgers didn't get to do in Green Bay. That's funny. I don't know if there's enough money in the world there's to get them not, to do that. But. No. Not, Rogers is on very limited time. He, he you don't want to be with Dan Campbell? Come on. You can't go to a rebuild like that. You ready for some mailbag? Let's go. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's been a season, Mike. Uh, if We're almost you there. have a question for the show, you can go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. I've said that line so many times, like you can dial the voicemail hotline. Right. And then I just heard it for the first time in my head. Mm -hmm. And like, how yeah. antiquated does the word hotline sound? <laughs> like dial our hotline. <laughs> like that sounds like it should be done on a, a, a touchtone phone, on right? Radio. And it's like, who was the marketing genius that came up with that? They're like, hey, give us a call on the phone lines. Wait a minute. And they're like, that's not. <laughs> like a guy in sunglasses, cigarette in hand, that's not cool enough. We got to get people involved. We got to make it hot. <laughs> make it hot. Ooh, the hotline. 
Uh, a direct phone line set up for specific purposes, especially for use in emergencies. It's coming in hot. This, these questions about fantasy. Mm, mm, yes. I mean, well, like the bat phone, that was... That was a hotline. That is a hotline. That's the only hotline if, that's ever existed. If your phone is red yes. and lights up when it's when it's ringing... Was that direct to Gordon? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. That's two, that's two that's, Batman references in two days. Yeah! We're on fire here. That was um, Adam West, Batman. Yes. And uh, he that, that phone was right across from where you could go down the pole. Yep. And he somehow became Batman down the pole, right? Yes, that is correct. The suit came on just... Don't question Batman. Oh, I didn't. I just wanted one of those in my own house. All right, let's go to a voicemail question. Hey, ballers. Do you think Baker Mayfield's a sneaky buy low in Dynasty right now? Thanks. Love the show. I, oh, man. No. I don't think so. Because I don't think he's that good. I think, And I think the team's running out of patience. Yeah, they, Cleveland has a very difficult decision coming up of – what do you do? Is he fifth? Is he fifth year option stuff or? Let's, yeah, pull that up. You, uh, you talk. I'll figure that out. Okay, so because Baker Mayfield has been okay, you have seen flashes here and there of he can he can be a true franchise quarterback, but you've also seen a lot of games where it's just it's not great. Look at like Odell Beckham. What was? What's been the deal with Odell Beckham and Baker Mayfield here for years? Beckham goes to the Rams. Now he not that he is old Odell Beckham, or I should say young Odell Beckham, but he was integrated right into that offense and was very productive, not just for for fantasy football, but for uh, a real NFL franchise. Did you do you have the numbers? Yeah, he did. They exercised the fifth year. Okay, so he'll get so one. he'll get eighteen million dollars next year. Yeah, but he, then he's an unrestricted free agent. Like, there's no they'll have to make an extension decision on him it, without question. For in terms of is he a sneaky buy or a trade low for in dynasty, perhaps in two quarterback leagues where you re, you want to make sure that you always have a second quarterback to play. But at this point of of his career, I mean, four years in, I th I think we know that no matter what, even if he becomes a a franchise quarterback his fantasy upside is just is very limited yeah if he stays there which is if you're that's got to be your hope right i mean that he stays with a long-term deal there and secures him as a starter now but he's been look his fantasy finishes as right. a quarterback 19 17 he's 26 this year now i know he's been banged up and hurt it doesn't really matter because this team's identity. You think it's changing overnight? Do we pay Baker Mayfield and it, that we're a passing team? It's he is an interesting name. Now that we're talking through it, of one of these teams that is close without a quarterback. I wonder if they pick up the hotline for the Cleveland Browns. Like if you're the Denver Broncos and you feel like your answer is not on the roster and you're you're not in the running for one of the the top quarterbacks in the draft at this point. Do you try and get? I don't know, man. Baker for cheap? I mean, they I don't, did it he, for Sam Darnold. That and that's a, that was a bad decision. Yes, and that feels like the, it feels like going back to the Teddy Bridgewater, okay. Drew Lock well. Yeah, I, I but no. So, so I don't, I don't think he's a buy low. No. I would yeah I would not trade for him at this point. And um, if someone else thinks he's a buy low, I might sell him. To be honest. Yes. Instagram question. It's for this week. DJ Moore versus Tampa or Odell Beckham Jr. against Minnesota. That one is very easy for me despite the bad week from Beckham. It's Beckham. It's Odell Beckham for me as well. Uh, like DJ Moore over the last month has quietly been fine. Like uh, For fantasy football, you're talking three of the, his last four games, he's been a top 24 wide receiver. The week that he wasn't, he was wide receiver, wide receiver 33, 6 for 84. Like he's been okay. Uh, but with Cam Newton and P.J. Walker, there's just, there is no ceiling there. And the Minnesota Vikings matchup, is it's still solid for wide receivers. All right, let's do another voicemail. This is Rhett. Uh, I can't believe I'm asking this question. It's disgusting. But do I start Tom Brady this week? or Taysom Hill, and I do have Mike Evans for the stack if he plays with Brady. All right, guys, thank you very much. Love the show. <laughs> hey, Rhett, 
Um, you were right. That that question should not be asked this early in the morning. Uh, my stomach was not prepared. <laughs> Tom Brady against Carolina. 44 point over under, 10 and a half point favorites. So definitely no Chris Godwin who has a torn ACL. I would say more than likely no Mike Evans. I'm going 70-30 no Mike Evans. Okay, so as in you believe he'll be out? Correct. So – no Fournette, the which great, actually matters. I mean, like yes, move, it does. Moving the sticks, Fournette was catching six, seven, eight passes yeah. a game. Yes, that absolutely matters. So you're talking the greatest player of all time. But throw, I mean, Antonio Brown should be back this week. So that's that is. A I'm playing massive, Tom Brady. That's a massive upgrade. You're playing Taysom Hill's playing the Miami Dolphins. It's the lowest over under of the week, thirty eight and a half points. Dolphins are on a, a win streak. Yeah. yeah, I, I agree. I'll play Tom Brady. People were giving me the business for the Miami defense last week, you know, through a couple of plays. Sure. But if you look at that game, where did they end up ranking? I mean, they were good. Yeah, on the and, and and one of them was like, you know how a lot of leagues will carve out like if the defense scores or special teams, they won't count it against the the defense. Right. Well, they had the they had the turnover that got down to the two yard line. And then the defense gives up a two yard run. It was it wasn't like the defense was bad. Yeah, our on our website we're showing they they were number six. Yeah, what a I mean they're they're playing good football and they've won a ton of games in a row. They're seven and six, and um, look, Taysom Hill has not shown that he can get it done in the passing game with the weapons that he has. So you're hoping for some some rushing yardage, and we saw the floor could we saw that the floor was lower than we thought it could be last week. Sure, but I mean, that game was weird. That was a what was a nine to zero? Yeah, at the end, Taysom they won. Hill versus the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a that's a game. I think you just for both sides need to just crumple that up and throw it in the garbage. We we don't we can't afford to. There's no, we don't have enough Taysom Hill starts to count into our into our memory banks. I don't know. I. I would probably just play Brady with the chip on his shoulder after a loss. Like Brady Arians after a loss, Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski. The Antonio Brown thing is is humongous because if it – like legitimately, I know he's Tom Brady, the greatest of all time, but if you're throwing the ball to Tyler Johnson, Scotty Miller, and Brashad Perryman, those are your – Yeah. And those he, are your weapons? Last week he didn't even have Perryman. Right, because he was so on the COVID So it's like list. he is getting some reinforcements this week. So, that's where I'd go. Now, I don't get to make that choice in Dynasty because he, he killed my season. Hopefully, Brady just has some, some extra kale smoothies this week. Yeah. Drink up, man. <laughs> I imagine he kale smoothies. I don't know. Does he, you think, does he smoothie? He may, main, he may mainline it. <laughs> they, just, they, they, they put it in the IV bag and just because of the drip? It might be a kale drip. <laughs> it might. Is that part of TB12? I'm seeing the producers are nodding. I think they confirmed. Yep. Oh man, confirmed. I'm just, just surprised you haven't hit the plant man drop yet. Kale on the right. Plant man, no. Oh, you going do double arms? Oh yeah, carrots on the left. Carrots. Oh yeah, you got to get that eyesight right. Isn't that isn't that uh, they fully liquefy them for the IV? Well, not for Tom Brady. Mm. It's actually it's not even it's not even liquid. It's, just, it's not a drip. It's just vegetables go right into his body. It's working. I, I, whatever he's doing is the best thing ever. There are, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm 37, and I watched a 37-year-old LeBron James fly the other day. Right. And then Tom Brady's, what, 44? Yeah, 44.4, actually. I really need to eat some plants. <laughs> I have not. I have lived a long time without, the, without a real commitment to plants. It's the taste. Yeah. They taste like crap. And that's why Tom Brady just has them put into his body. You can avoid yes. the taste buds. That's right. Oh, my gosh. He's a genius. Yeah, all right. <laughs> we're learning. You're saying that I – do you think I could still um... – No, there's, okay. not, there's not right. enough time for the vegetables you need to consume. Okay, for me to get. Yep. You I, need to have started when you're five. I could have really been something. That's when he, he created TB12 when he was five years old. Because uh, someone looked at him and said, I don't think you could do that. That's right. Yeah. Um, Spencer says, how do I stay committed to the rest of the season if I lost in the first round of the playoffs? I, I you know, we, we talk about this a lot. First of all, I'm sorry. Second yeah. of all, you're not alone. Yeah, it's it's surprising every year you forget. 
but actually only one person in your league can win. I know. I know. We were. <laughs> it's very difficult. We had uh, some friends over last night. We were sitting by the fire. I was reflecting on week 15. It just beaten. I felt like I had a boxer getting out of the ring. Mm -hmm. And my wife was like, you know, like there's like a 11 out of 12 chance that you're <laughs> depressed at the end of the year. And yeah. I'm like, ah, yes. that's true. Yeah, but the, the way to stay involved, I mean, DFS, if you've never jumped into that, if you're in a place where you can play, uh, we got we do have a fantastic DFS podcast hosted by Kyle DeBorgogan and our dude Matthew Betts. Um, and if, like, honestly, if you are uh, in a place where you can play DFS, it's possible that you can also do prop bets. Like, that's a way where you can test that fantasy knowledge of, like, I like this player. Is he going to hit over 67 yards this week. I think you can challenge yourself there as well. You know, we try to, like this is a year-round show. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a long period of time coming up that, you know, you're not in the playoffs either, right? And you're you're following the show and we're reflecting like some of the questions we had today on Diggs and McLaurin. And um, we try to keep the show entertaining and uh, you can watch us melt down and you can stay connected with the last three or four weeks of the season because, you know, a lot of things happen in that span, especially for young players where you may get an indication of, of how to view them for next year. So we'll try to keep you uh, connected and enjoying yourself. And um, <clears throat> unless I lose to Al, in which case I'll be gone and I'll get the flu on purpose. Uh, Instagram question from John. Can you trust Dak this oh, week? Oh my gosh. After multiple duds, he's been outside the top 20 in all three weeks. Washington. My answer is definitively no. Yeah. No, no, no. Washington is setting up to be very similar to the game script that I would have seen in the New York Giants game, which is if you're coming, you don't need to air this out. Washington's not going to be able to put points up. How healthy is Antonio Gibson? Well, I mean, Hurts did. Hurts when, like, Jalen Hurts, not known for prolific passing yardage. Dro I Dropped a three hundo. I, I hear you, but. I don't think Washington is going to be able to do enough against that defense. So, yeah, maybe Heineke's back. Maybe Gibson's out. McKissick's on IR. I don't know if we mentioned that. Oh, I had not heard that. He, they made the move? I believe so. Okay. I, yes, I, I did. I saw that report yesterday. So, you're talking about, you know, as a follow-up on the waivers, if your waivers are going through tomorrow, Jarrett Patterson. Yeah. You better put him on the radar. He's in that Samaj P. Ryan could be really helpful. Scored his first touchdown of his career yesterday. So, and is the season, you know, is this, is it over for Washington at this point mentally? Right? It, it, they're probably out of it. So, is Antonio Gibson playing on a bad toe going to be a priority? Uh, I do not know. So, uh, but so, but so back to Dak. Yeah, back to Dak. I mean, it, I it's all about your other options, though. Yeah. So, I, I don't blame you that you do not want to trust him, but at this point, Okay, let's say they're home. Okay, so let's go Dak Prescott or Jimmy Garoppolo against the Tennessee Titans. You got to yeah. make that decision quick because he's Thursday. Yeah, oh, I thought you meant like quick right now. Like I'm like, <laughs> why? Why am I up against it? Um, the people need to know. I would play Dak, okay. but that doesn't nullify the question, which is, can you trust Dak? I can't trust him. I would still probably play him over a Tannehill or a Garoppolo or, you know, whatever. You said you talked about golf with their matchup. And, like, I'm not playing him over those other options because. What about Justin Fields against Seattle? That is a great one. That's, that is a great one because Justin Fields has found a way into that top, those top finishes. Yeah, so Justin Fields in completed games. In because uh, he only played a, about half of the game against uh, Baltimore in Week 11, but since Week 8, he's been a top 10 fantasy quarterback in every single one of those weeks. Again, except for the Baltimore game. If you have courage, <laughs> then the matchup I'm okay with that. Going to Fields, yeah, because right. I mean Seattle season just ended too. Uh, last night was their last hurrah. So, man, that would be – that's tough because Justin is. Fields is a turnover machine. Yes. So, no, I'm not playing. No, I'll play Dak. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to play Dak. Okay. I'm going to hope for I'm going to hope for the talent and the bounce back and the, and the people around him. This has been helpful. 
because I'm learning about. I'm learning. You know, I can I trust him to to well, win no. me the week? No, but could, does he still have Dak upside? Of course he does. I mean, he just too many broken promises, Dak. Yeah, yeah. Get it together. Why don't we talk about more football? Thursday night breakdown. I I apologize. I do have one more question. Uh, one more mailbag question. Okay. Um, this comes in off of Twitter from at chin cover underscore FF. Oh, which okay. is the Mike Wright beard account. I have a beard account. Uh, you do. Mike Wright's beard. Okay. How much crying is acceptable? Oh, what? As much as you need, my friend, as much as get, get it out. Those emo <laughs> the you, you bottle those emotions up. Like we were told like back when we were, cutting down trees and just everyone's a lumberjack man no <laughs> no you'll turn into a serial killer let the emotions out of your body the tears are cleansing <laughs> let the tears cleanse your soul if only they counted for fantasy points look yeah that'd be great because then i would have so many fantasy <laughs> points this year <laughs> <laughs> so many. All right, the 49ers are 8 and 6. They're on a roll. They're taking on the Tennessee Titans 9 and 5. Sport uh the DK Sportsbook line 49ers minus 3 and a half. This is on the road. This is a, like the over under is 44. Tennessee is is um they're playing with the replacements at this point in time. Well, maybe AJ Brown's back. Yeah. AJ Brown and Julio Jones uh, the injury train on those guys. Yeah, it's terrifying because if AJ Brown's back out there, you're just afraid of him falling. That's what I'm falling saying, down again. Where I was saying, like, of uh, should you be disappointed in Stephon Diggs? You easily could have drafted AJ Brown right there. Yeah, be happy <laughs> with your count your blessings. Yeah, these are establish it teams, Mike. We needed we need oh. another Island primetime game where establish it is the mantra and. Tennessee, oh, most rush attempts in the NFL. San Francisco, the second highest rush rate. The big question marks in this game are the starting running backs because Elijah Mitchell is is a game time decision. Could be back. Deonta Foreman, full practice on Tuesday. Seems like he's going to be back. But let's start with the 49er side. They okay. run the ball a ton. They're successful at it. So the implications here, Elijah, if he's back, do you play him? And if he's not, is Jeff Wilson a strong start? Because Tennessee is really good against the run. Number two in the last six weeks, number one on the year. Yeah, I don't think that either of these players is definitely like – where a lot of the time this year, if you've had the starter, you feel like you have a top 15 locked-in option. In terms of volume, you will. It, it's been interesting over the season that – for the 49ers, where they're known for, over the last couple of years, a real platoon situation, you just hope you have the guy who has the most touches. But when they have the starter, they have been very committed to that player as the starter in terms of opportunity. It had, Like for Jeff Wilson, it hasn't always turned into fantasy delight and fantasy points. He did come through this past week. But I would still be playing them despite the matchup here if and if it like if it's Elijah Mitchell if he is back I oh gosh a game time decision I think I do play the teams him. with running identities have succeeded on the ground against Tennessee New England okay Indianapolis twice you know the last couple of weeks now Pittsburgh didn't and I guess you would. I'm not really sure what the identity of Pittsburgh is. <laughs> okay, I don't think they. I think that's fair. They don't know who they are. Jacksonville anymore. didn't, but that was a game I think where James Robinson had five carries. So, you know, Houston didn't. Big surprise there, right? Um, so I, I don't know. If I, I, if just the question is, if Elijah Mitchell game time decision, they say he's active. Are you just putting him yes. right back in? Yes, okay. because I, I know that Shanahan. Every time this has happened. He's willing to give 26 carries to that player. He's willing to go – he doesn't siphon off a few. It's like you're back, you're ready, you're not – that's why I don't think he'll be back. It's because I think that's what he wants to build the game plan around. He doesn't want to sit there and go, I'm going to manage Elijah Mitchell's health and his knee. So then – Because because Jeff is enough. 
So if Mitchell's out, Jeff Wilson in? No, he's in. Okay. He's, I in. Have, he's in for me. I would rather play Deonta Foreman if somehow that's – Over those guys? Yeah. Okay. If, if that's the question, um, assuming you – know, I need – let me see those final practice reports on Deonta Foreman. Just make sure he's okay. It was a full practice on Tuesday, so have to imagine he is good to go. And he's just averaging nearly 20 touches over the last three games. He has looked good, so I – I would roll with Foreman. Brandon Ayuk, you, you just can't trust. You can't sure. trust him going. In, I'm not playing him in this game. Really? No. Even with the matchup being there, I know the Titans have been a little more stingy against fantasy wide receivers the the last six weeks, but on the season, they are second to last. Yeah, as I, in you want look, to play I, your wide receiver. I'm not receiver saying you can't them. you can't flex him if you need to. I mean, there's a lot of players. Are you playing him over AJ Brown in the game? If AJ Brown is active, I'm going to play him over Brandon Ayuk. Okay. And you know, Kittle's obvi- Kittle and Samuel are obviously in your lineup. Um, but this game doesn't feel very complicated to me. You don't want to go out and like just because you want to have a player to watch on Thursday night, throw somebody into your lineup that you don't need to play. Where are you at with uh, with Dontrell Hilliard? I was I I I picked him up in a league. I thought if Foreman's out, that Hilliard will be a really strong play. But I don't think Foreman's going to be out, and, and at that point, it's it's no, no, thank you. But even uh, even with Foreman, you know, being in and being the main guy over the last four weeks, he's out. Av- let, let me get the average here. He is averaging almost fourteen opportunities a game. Yeah, I, I guess I just don't have the don't okay don't have the I'm confidence too, too to play scared, the backup too running scared, back. Yeah, Do we have any other um, practice updates, Brooksy? No, sir. Um, Jets might be without their head coach. Robert Sala tested positive for COVID-19. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Is there anything else from that matchup that you think is headline news? I mean, I, I don't like the quarterbacks in that game to, to lean on in the semifinal playoff matchup. Sure. I mean, we, we just ran the DAC Jimmy Garoppolo question. Yeah. So, you know, San Francisco's playing well. Tennessee's trying to hold on. I mean, at this point, they're they're one and three over the last month. They were eight and two before they lost everybody. They um, look. Indianapolis is eight and six. So if Tennessee, you know, the D- DK Sportsbook has f- the 49ers winning this game. If Tennessee loses and Indianapolis beats Arizona, <laughs> which seems very possible, sure. Then um, they're tied, but Tennessee does have the tiebreaker. So. Mm-hmm. Because Arizona's now tied with the Rams. Yes. Arizona, I believe, currently they do have holds the tiebreaker. The tiebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. But the 49ers, the 49ers are coming, man. I heard something this morning that I believe said 27 NFL teams are still in playoff contention. Wow. So I didn't I didn't vet it, but that's cr- The one extra said. team, it makes a difference. So a reminder, though, if you do play a Jeff Wilson and Elijah Mitchell and A.J. Brown and Elijah. Debo. Don't put them in your flex, for goodness sakes. Put them in the position. Save that flex for when you need to cry slash flex out of somebody that's been added to the COVID list or mm-hmm. hurts themselves this this week. Mm-hmm. Starts of the week, boom, boom, kicker. Oh, my gosh. Do we have to read that for him? I think we do. I mean, maybe, maybe Al can do it tomorrow. I think if nothing changes, he's planning on remoting in tomorrow, but we'll see how he's feeling. Man, I'm not feeling very good, guys. Oh, is that him live? Do we have? We're going live to Jason. <laughs> you forgot I was here, guys. <laughs> it's me. It's definitely me, Jason Moore. Boom, boom. I don't believe in Devo Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bit. We just take all his bad takes and we use That's that voice. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. He won't listen this far into the show. He won't know this happened today. Guys, I'm feeling real good about Kerry and Johnson this week. <laughs> <laughs> have, I t- have I a few t- uh, Rodney Anderson. Kerry on the Hollywood I like that song a lot. <laughs> I don't want to shut the show down. I just want to find. He is getting. Sh- uh, he's shaming you this week. So be careful. But I like Mike. He's so cool. <laughs> I would never do that. I would never do nothing. Make him uncomfortable. Uh, uh, get well, Jason. Yeah. Get well soon. Um, maybe we'll we'll talk to you tomorrow. Maybe. 
<laughs> we'll see how I'm doing. That's going to do it for, for today's show, see everybody. You, Muppet? Get the waivers in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.